Okay, thank you. Um, I'm presenting this talk in the in context of experience, where the idea is that depending on the context, you might want to consume different kind of videos. This is really a, a task that is organized by Michael Riegler. He couldn't be here for some personal reasons. I guess you can get a hint from the picture. Um, because he's expecting his first child any of these days. So, how could we make this cool task? Well, we like movies. We are in many different situations all the time. And we would like to have recommendations. <coughs> So, we tried to mix all this and came up with this how to watch movies on an airplane. What kind of movies are suitable in this context and what is good and what is bad. So, in this case, people usually want to be entertained. They want to have time fly away. So, then the question is how can we come up with systems that recommend movies for this kind of context? What is good? What is bad? How can, can we make systems find which videos are suitable in this context? So, this is probably a situation where you've all been many, many times already this year. You have a lot of different factors influencing your experience, like the engine noise in the background, you have frequently announcements, turbulence, narrow spaces, bad screens really, and of course, you have a lot of people around you. For example, should you watch a really violent movie if you have a kid next to you? So, this situation is definitely different than what you have in your living room at home, having a home theater, right? And does this influence what kind of movies you should look or what you want to look at? In order to investigate this, we collected data over a three month period from KLM. That gave us 318 movies. We got metadata from various sites, names, ratings, user comments, and so on. We extracted audio features, visual features. We provided links to the, to the trailers, because we couldn't, of course, use the movies, and posters. And then we split the data set into a 7030 test and training set. In order to get the ground truth, we crowdsourced um, for user opinions, meaning that the workers um, provided some opinions whether or not a movie was good or bad on a plane. We had approximately 550 workers, giving us approximately 1,600 useful judgments. And then we ranked the videos in order to get consent. Then, of course, you could use whatever you wanted in the runs that um, the, the participants provided. You could use all the useful information, you could just, just use some of it. And we saw a lot of different combinations. Some used for content only, some used metadata only, and we had the variations and, and the combinations. Um, we had three participating teams, one from TU Delft, we had from, from Austria, and we had from Simula. And they provided different types of runs. And uh, the Delft participants used some kind of multimodal classifier stacking um, with pretty good results, as you will see in, in the next slide. Then we had the uh, Austrian guys using deep learning, text based native versions, and so on, and tried also different combinations of, of the data that we have available. And then Konstantin and Michel at Simla tried three different trends using global features and a classifier tree. Um, I'm not going to give you all the details because tomorrow you'll have some great talks where they all present their results in, in detail. But you can see that they provided pretty good results in order to detect what's good and what's bad. And as you can see on the, on the left side, they provided runs with different combinations of the available data. They did uh, also different runs at uh, uh, the University of, of Klagenfurt, where they used visual posters, visual trailers, text, and a combination of text and, and keywords. And again, pretty good results. 
Then Konstantin and Michal at Simla, they tried using global features based on, on Lira and they combined uh, metadata and visual information. They used metadata only and the visual information only. And as you can see again, pretty good results with respect to both precision recall and DF1 score. If you're ranking this, kind of have a winner, which is the Austrian guys. But he just didn't believe it yesterday, I guess, because he thought they were last. But if you disqualify the organizing team, they're at the top. Um, so, what kind of insights can we learn from this? Well, in one way, it's kind of surprising that the visual features perform best because you have ratings, you have comments, and so on. But in this case, this gave the best results. Maybe because brightness and things like that have something to say. Text achieves better results than metadata, and there's no obvious correlation between comments and, and ratings and what people actually choose. Furthermore, some uh, types of videos are more popular than others, like comedies and, and family movies, which seems to be most, most popular. So in the future, what can be better? Well, you can always get more data. You can collect data over a longer period than the three months that we already used. You can maybe include other airlines as well, or maybe movies in general. We have provided a set of, of, of uh, features, but of course, this can also be extended. And maybe not only using crowdsourcers, but maybe collect data on real flights. So whenever you're out flying and you watch a movie, maybe you should classify it as good or bad. And of course, the session tomorrow, where you want to learn more. We have three great presenters presenting their work. And um, come and you'll learn a lot. And then of course, maybe next year, we might see you again. Thank you.